Noelle Michaels here. Hi guys. Welcome to Noelle Chat. We are still at 33 subscribers. I think this is the third video with 33. So we need to share. We need to thumbs up. And we need to tell our friends about Noel Chat so that they will subscribe as well. And subscribing is just a click. That's all it is. If you don't want any notifications, just don't ding the bell. If you want to know every time a new video comes out, then you ding the bell. It's that simple. Okay. Thank you for everyone that has been subscribing. And today I found out because there are some subscribers, I can't see their names, <clears throat> that my Facebook friend, Joelle, subscribed. And Joelle is a person who always likes to learn new things. So that's why I made him this video's super special subscriber. <laughs> I'm going to have to take a minute <laughs> to get a drink because... All of a sudden, my throat is very, very dry. So I'm right near my refrigerator. I'm hoping I can open it up and just reach in and get some water. Oh, that's olive oil. I don't want to drink olive oil. <laughs> Let me switch the table over. Okay. Ah, here it is. I found the water. Got it. Get back and sit in line. Okay. That was really weird, but my throat just went really dry. <laughs> I've got my water. <clears throat> Hopefully that'll help. When I moved the table, something fell off that we need for today. So, about a week ago, I put up a video about ketosis and the keto diet. And basically, that is a low-carb diet where I had very low carbs. The carbs that I got were mostly from vegetables and a very tiny amount of fruit. Maybe I'd say at the most a half of an orange, a small orange, or a third of a mango, something like that. Some days less fruit than others. So I wanted to give you guys an update. And I kept my uh, statistics with a sticky note on the refrigerator, which was easy to do. I kept the date, my weight, upon waking, after going to the bathroom, of course, and um, also my blood sugar in the morning because the reason I did this diet, if you remember, was because my feet swole up. And one of the uh, reasons your feet can swell up is if you're uh, becoming diabetic, and my mom had type 2 diabetes later in life. So I wanted to take my blood sugar as well. So we're going to talk about the update. We're going to talk about how to take your blood sugar today. And also <clears throat> something about um, eye pencils. I'm going to teach you about that too. And also about exercises you can do if you get swollen feet. And you want to move, um, actually, you want to move the lymph in your lymphatic system. Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. A plethora of things. If you don't know what plethora means, look it up. P-L-E-T-H-E-R-A, plethora. Okay, here we go. First, we'll do the update, and I'll get my chart. Okay, let's make sure we're up in light. I can see well. This is the update chart 
for week one. As you could see, I did okay. Started on Wednesday with a weight of 150.8. And to tell you the truth, a few days before that, I was even a couple more pounds higher. So I had already started a little bit going down, just kind of changing, starting to change things. But this is what we documented. So my weight went from Wednesday to Tuesday, seven days, and it went from 150.8 down to 146.8, which is a total of four pounds lost, which is amazingly good. I'm happy with that. Now, BG stands for blood glucose, and that's blood sugar, okay? Normal waking blood sugar for someone with no diabetes problems is between 70 and 85. That's normal. 70 to 85. Mine started out with 97. And it's really based on having not eaten for probably 8 to 10 hours, I believe. So I don't know if that was a night that I was up a little later and eating later or not. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But the first number was 97, and then 87, 85. I put a little star there because that's in the normal range. Remember? 70 to 85. Here it was a little higher. 90, 88. 91 and actually this morning I was in such a rush I forgot to take my blood sugar which isn't good shouldn't really skip but nobody's perfect I guess so there we go four pounds lost over the week and I had one number that was in the normal range uh, 87 I'd be okay with 88 starting to go up a little bit more I'd like to see more in the 70 to 85 range. Also, after you eat, I think three hours after you eat, your blood sugar should come down to about 120 or less to show that the insulin production is good and that it's bringing down the blood glucose. We'll talk more about that in a second. Let me put the chart away. Okay, so if you don't know anything about blood sugar, I'll give you a little quickie lesson in that. First of all, when you eat things that have sugar or carbohydrates, which get churned into sugar in the body, then the sugar is in the bloodstream trying to get to the cells. The cells are like locked. Nice nails, right? <laughs> Okay, the cells are locked, and the only way that the blood sugar can get from the blood into the cell is to unlock the cell. And what unlocks the cell? Insulin. Insulin unlocks the cell and lets the sugar come in and feed the cell. Okay, so the more sugar and carbs you eat, the more blood sugar there is, the more insulin you're going to need to keep opening that door opening that door. And using so much insulin can be wary on the pancreas. In the pancreas are beta cells. Those are what produce insulin. And after a while, your body tuckers out, gets tired, está cansada, that too. And it's not easy for it to make that much insulin. So your blood glucose numbers stay higher because the blood sugar is not passing into the cell. Okay? Now, what I did, like I said before, was I ate lower carbs. So there was no bread, which also meant no gluten, right? No cakes, no candies. Uh, what I basically ate was some protein, not too much protein. Some people go overboard with the protein. It's really not the main thing you should be eating. The main thing should be vegetables and salads with a little protein 
and a little bit of natural fruit. Little, tiny bit, little bit, <laughs> okay? Um, if you eat a huge fruit salad, uh, that might be problematic at first. Once you get down the weight and your blood sugar is better, then having more fruits for some people is not a problem at all. I hope to be in that category because I love fruit. Fruit's delicious, isn't it? Oh, I love fruit. Okay, so the way that you test your blood sugar is first thing in the morning. They call it a fasting blood sugar because hopefully you haven't been eating during the night. If you get up during the night, then you just want to have a little bit of water. Water does not raise your blood sugar, see? Okay. Now, um, this is the machine that I use. It's called a One Touch Ultra 2. That's what it looks like, the box anyway. These usually cost about $20 at the CVS or other pharmacy. Rite Aid, Walgreens. And when you look at what you get, you get a case and you will get a test of blood. Uh, we call it a pricker. I don't know. It, it's what you use to prick yourself so that you can test the blood. This is the testing machine. And then you have to get a prescription to get test strips. This uses the One Touch Ultra. There are 50 test strips in here. Now, a store like CVS has its own brand of machine. Machines and test strips go together. They go together. Sometimes when you buy a machine, it will include the little um, pricker with it. Other times it doesn't, so be aware of what's in here. On this box, if you look on the back, there it is. That's included. And it says Delica, and that uses these needles, lancets, they're called, lancets. Okay, they go into it. And these are changed each time you take a blood sugar. So use a lot of them. In this box, there are 100. Okay. Another thing you're going to need is alcohol, or you can just wash your hands very well. So my hands were just washed. And this still has the old needle that I used last time. So you have to turn and pull up and there is the exposed needle. There goes the cap. Try not to drop things <laughs> because first of all they get dirty and second of all they could break and when they break that's a problem. So since it fell on the floor I'm going to take one of the alcohol wipes and I'm going to wipe it good. Well, I'm going to wipe it well. See, in Brooklyn, we never said well. We always just said good, and everybody was fine with that. But some people, they know the difference between good and well, and they want you to say the right thing. So I try to hear and again say well. Like, how are you doing? Can you say good? Don't. Are you doing well? Yes, I'm doing well. Okay, so you have the one that's been used. You have a new one. The new one comes where this is the needle part and this is a little cap. The cap goes on the top of the used one and you push down, get it secure. And this part helps push up, up and get it out. Okay, this part slides up and down. All right, so now the old one is in here. The new one is on the bottom. You push the new one in, 
and you turn like this. And there you go. Now you have to put the cap back on, which I just cleaned with alcohol. So it goes on cockeyed and then twist into a matching. All right. Now there are numbers on the bottom where you can adjust. They go from seven down to one. Now, <laughs> this was set at seven. So I've been using it at seven. I'm not really sure. I think I'll get to go for a five because, you know, one will hurt a little bit more than the, than the next. All right, but before you prick yourself, you want to make sure that in the machine, which is all blank now, that there is a test strip. So the test strips look like this. One side with the dark lines goes into the machine. The other side that has that little window, that is where the blood goes. Okay? So you put it in, and when you push in, it should say code 25, and that matches the code on the bottle, code 25. And then it will start telling you to put the blood in. So you have to prick the finger. All right. Since I was touching the floor, I'm going to wipe the spot side of the finger towards the middle, uh, a little bit towards the middle, is usually less, less painful. So it's dry. I'm going to pull this up, but since I had pressed the needle down so hard to put it in, it's already pressed down. To release it is the button. That's what pricks, and bringing this up is what cocks it, okay? So I put it here. And squeeze the finger. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this. And a little drop of blood. Usually they ask you to wipe it and try to get another drop of blood. And then this will soak it up into it. See? Oh, it's got red. And then you can just wipe your finger off. And this is what came up. 133. This is not the morning test. It is actually three o'clock in the morning and I ate um, dinner and after dinner I had something else to eat and this was the first day that I did have carbs. So I had some bread uh, with a sandwich to go to, to see how it would feel after a week of without. And I also had a few chips with tuna and avocado, and I tell you, I felt terrible. <laughs> I had to go to sleep, but I just felt terrible. And now here it is. I must have finished eating 9, maybe 10 o'clock. I had another thing. So it's been five hours, and my blood sugar is still not down to 120 or less. So that's not good. That's not a good sign. I'm trying different things so I have information to give the doctor when I go for my physical. That I don't have to start doing all that then. This that has the blood is thrown away and the needle will be changed for a clean needle. Okay, if you have any questions about blood testing um, or how insulin works, just ask in the comments and I will answer you. If you're on a mobile phone, scroll down below all those videos and there'll be a place to put in a comment. Okay, so blood sugar and weight loss. We're done with that. Let me put this where it goes. Okay. Now, my lips are a little dry too, so I'm just going to put a little color just so it'll look nice. My friend, uh, 
Oh, I don't have my mirror. Where's my mirror? It's right behind me. I tell everybody when I do these videos, what I see in the monitor is backwards, and so I get confused which way I'm going. And having a mirror by the side is a big help if you ever make a video. Have a mirror handy. Okay. This is the color flushed. Two in one lip du duo. You have the lipstick and then you unscrew. Do not pull like I was doing the wrong way. And that is a little bit of a lip gloss, which is fun. With a nice fruity smell, that's pleasant. Okay, there you go. Uh, LA Colors Lip Gloss from the Dollar Store. Lip, lip Duo, I should say. Mm, before I do the eyes, I do want to do another request to name this plant. You see the plant? This plant was on our last video. It's sort of like our mascot. The name of it is mother-in-law tongue and it's a plant that reminds me of my grandmother and we're going to name it and because this plant has a little baby we're looking for more of a female name a little baby plant sticking up there okay so name this plant put it in the comments it can be creative name or traditional whichever you like. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about was, um, I have very little eye stuff on, just a little bit of liner. And um, I came across this pencil, Revlon Color Stay Eyeliner Crayon. Yeah. All right, here it is. Years ago, I was a Mary Kay lady, and I took a lot of lessons <laughs> in makeup. Now, they may not be up to date with everything that's going on now with makeup, with the contouring and all that. I'm not big on contouring. But one thing I did learn that I found was very, very helpful was about when you use under eye liner. And what we were taught was putting it on one way will make your eyes look bigger. Putting it on a different way will actually make your eyes look smaller. And in general, most people who have pretty nice eyes will want their eyes to look bigger. So I'm gonna do one way on one eye, one way on the other, and you can tell the difference in size. Let's do this experiment together, okay? On the first eye, I'm going to hold my eye open and I'm going to put the color on the inside of my bottom lashes. This was a really big look in the 60s and 70s and some people continue to do this look today. I remember people taking a, um, a match to the tip of a black pencil, black eyebrow pencil, because at, I don't even remember us having eyeliner pencils at first. It was just eyebrow pencils. So they would take it, and so it would get really, really dark and soft. And this is a blue color, so this is not going to look as dark as a black color would be. But... I just want you to get the idea of putting it, and of course you pull your eye, it away from your eye because you don't want to poke yourself. Okay, so this is one look, people that put it inside. And then here's the other look. The other look, I'm gonna take my mirror out. The other look is to get up underneath the bottom lashes.
and the way that I was taught was to do it to the middle of the eye, not, not any closer to the nose than that. And I'm going over it a little bit to make sure it's dark enough that you can see it. Okay. That's a little juicy. So, do you see a difference? Can you see how one makes the eye look smaller and one makes the eye look bigger? If you can't, I will tell you. <laughs> this one underneath will make the eye look larger. And putting it inside actually makes the effect of making the eye look smaller. Okay? So, if you're doing it this way, and you absolutely love it, and you don't care if your eyes look bigger or smaller, then you can continue. If you want to say, hey, let me try something different. Let me switch to this way and see how I like it. And remember, we're not going way in, only halfway. Do it that way for a few days. See if you get any responses from people who know you well. They might say, hey, you look different. <laughs> What's different? Okay, so that's my makeup tip for today is keep the bottom liner on the outside below the lower lashes and only halfway in. There you go. Anything else? I think that's it for today, guys. I hope you learned something good and always like to hear from you. Thank you for coming to Noel Chat, a nice positive place where you can learn a plethora of things. And Every video has a super special subscriber. Let's hope the next one will be you. Take care, guys.